Okay, okay, if I was a smarter version of me, where would I put it? There are some great lenses out there that you just wouldn't use every day. They are longer and heavier than many of the lenses you could choose to use. However, they offer high quality glass and a constant low f-stop across their zoom range. On the flip side, there are some prime lenses that are so compact that many people would write them off as unprofessional. If there's one thing we've learned in street photography, it's that size isn't everything. It's not the size, mate. It's how you use it. There's a common line you'll come across in online photography. That the best camera is the one that's with you. Which on an annual basis leads to lots of photography channels promoting smartphone photography as the go-to option. When it comes to the interchangeable lens camera systems we have to choose from when trying to create a camera you can have with you all the time, we have so many options. We can go one extreme of having a large full frame camera with a super compact lens, or on the flip side, having a tiny micro four thirds camera with a pancake zoom lens. The intention most of us are aiming for is to find this perfect like icky guy of a street camera, something that addresses all the problems we have and all the needs that we have perfectly. It's a compact but comfortable camera with a high quality but smaller lens that delivers a great shooting experience with high image quality. The one that you could truly always carry with you. Now, I've never been a successful everyday carry camera kind of guy, but having the option that can fit in either a jacket pocket or a smaller bag actually does open up a lot more doors, so you rarely regret not carrying a camera with you. When you're always committing to a camera strap or a large camera bag, you are often suddenly feeling like you are carrying a camera. But if you can create a kit that fits in something relatively small that you can carry with you very casually and not really care if you take it out or not, then that's the place I want to aim for. You'd be down here? I'm going to have to buy another one at this point. It's no secret that I'm a fan of pancake lenses, especially when they're pancake zoom lenses that are ever so scrumptious. There are some pancake lenses I've covered on this channel and some that I've shot with before I started doing YouTube. Whether these are pancake lenses for full frame DSLRs or for APS-C or for micro four thirds, they are genuinely such a fun option when it comes to getting more regular use case out of your camera without having to commit to a larger zoom lens, for example. Pocket zooms are a very entertaining option, especially when you first get your hands on one. But the problem I've always had with them is that they always have a variable aperture. Pancake primes from various manufacturers though will always have a fixed f-stop because they are prime lenses. And you can get these in sometimes 1.7 from micro four thirds, but this Sony 20 millimeter is an f 2.8 and is super small as small as some Micro Four Thirds pancakes while being for a larger sensor camera. Now, when I picked up the Sony 20 millimeter, I had experience with pancake lenses and I thought, okay, if there's a pancake this small for Sony APS-C, the quality can't be very good. I'm gonna be getting a massive trade-off here in image quality. But in reality, I have been really, really pleased with the sharpness of the images from this glass and overall the responsiveness of the autofocus and how quiet it is for street photography. Some Sony Primes, even their Nifty 50 1.8, have a slightly outdated focusing system from what I can tell. It's a little bit louder than motor and it can take a little while to actually find focus. But this Sony 20 millimeter is super snappy and very easy to use. My favorite wide focal length prime has always been a 28 mil since I picked one up pretty much by accident from this camera shop in Manchester for my Minolta film camera. It's the widest focal length I felt comfortable with when shooting street and travel photography and it's always kind of been my go-to after a 50 mil for shooting street when I first started. But from experimenting with different focal lengths and trying out a 35 millimeter here and there on film cameras, I started to think that, you know, anything between 28 and 40 actually does feel quite good as well. So the 30 millimeter full frame equivalent focal length of the 20 millimeter Sony lens actually is a surprisingly good fit for my style of shooting. And it's one that I can recommend to both 35 mil shooters and to 28 mil shooters. And to be honest, mentally, I think when I look at images from this lens and then I compare them with 28 millimeter lenses from my Minolta lens, which is probably my most used film lens, I don't really necessarily notice the difference in field of view by two millimeters. Some of you might be able to, but for me, that's not something I'm particularly in tune with.
This is why I can't have nice things. Every single time, every pancake lens, I either eat it or I lose it. While I've been testing the older Sony NEX5, which I've been showing a lot on the channel recently, one of the lenses I tested with it was this Sony 20mm f2.8, because they felt like a match made in heaven. It was one of the original Sony mirrorless APS-C cameras with one of the original Sony Prime lenses. However, this combination was not actually my original intention when picking up this lens. The main reason I picked up this lens was to pair it with my brand new Sony a6700 which has become my go-to digital street photography camera. Now this is a reasonably compact APS-C camera, but I have actually added a small rig base plate to the bottom of it just to accommodate my big hands. But because of the naturally deep grip of the a7700, this is actually the best handful of camera I've used, be it full frame or APS-C size cameras. Specifically for mirrorless here, but even a full frame mirrorless Sony does not feel as good as this camera in my opinion. Now regardless of the lens that I put on this camera, this now feels like the perfect hand full of camera to carry on a wrist strap or just to keep gripped in my hand when walking around the city. But then with the 20mm f2.8, this becomes the most pocketable version of this camera that I have. Now I can fit this in some of my jacket pockets, but for the most part I actually carry it in the famous Uniqlo sling bag. I know I carry a camera in a Uniqlo don't shoot me. I don't actually like camera bags that much, but that's that's another video. From all the images I've captured so far with the 20mm, what it lacks in kind of tactile, like analog controls that you might get from some Fuji lenses, even some Sony third-party lenses, or from old film lenses, it does make up for, in general, just compact factor and snappy performance. Especially when paired up with modern Sony AI autofocus, it is near impossible to misfocus on anything. It always focuses right up to the edge of the frame with AI tracking and doesn't suffer from any sort of blind spots that you get on some cheaper third party lenses or older lenses. There's little to be said about pleasing bokeh or background blur, but to be honest, when it comes to street, I'm stopping down quite far anyway and I'm shooting to get lots of the image in focus. So getting a shallow depth of field isn't something I've always aimed for. In the past couple of years, I've experimented much more with different form factors of cameras and different sensor formats, such as Micro Four Thirds cameras or compact CCD sensor cameras. As the majority of the time, I've shot with 35mm film, full frame DSLRs or some APS-C DSLRs and mirrorless. My opinion, fed pretty much just by pop culture for many years from being a teenager, was that the bigger the sensor, the better the camera. And especially from when I've trialed a couple of Micro Four Thirds cameras, I've realized that is not always the case. My opinion of bigger sensor equals better photos has completely shifted. And now I understand there is a spectrum of use cases that will cover all of these cameras. I no longer think that it's a definitive truth that full frame cameras offer a better, more pure photography experience because of the similarities of the sensor format to 35 millimeter film frames. Having a larger camera is never usually my go-to factor. Usually having something that is super comfortable in my hand, something that I can carry around and not really feel it, and something that feels like a joy to shoot with, is the primary factor I'm looking for. A compact and comfortable camera with a smaller lens removes obstacles from street photography, rather than adding obstacles by carrying around heavier kit. Sorry. came out clean. Thank God I don't have to buy another one. Just don't swallow it again. <laughs>